so just a, a little bit about Javelin technology for those of you who are new to uh, to us. Um, you know, we are a Canadian SolidWorks reseller from coast to coast, so uh, six offices across the coast, um, over 80 people. I think we're actually approaching uh, 90 people now with some of the different uh, work that we're doing in different industries. Um, yeah, you're you're in good hands with us, and uh, we're excited to show you this uh, this new technology today. Right. So my uh, myself, I'm Eric Van Essen. I am uh, the director of products here at Javelin Technologies, and uh, with me I have uh, I'm Scott Ellery. I'm an application expert at Javelin. Um, excited to bring you some uh, some visualized content today. Perfect. And you're in good hands with Scott. He's been uh, helping write this uh, new course on SolidWorks Visualize, so we're we're pretty excited to share some of that with you today. So start off with a little game. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna start off with a little uh, little game here. So we've got we've got two different images here, um, the left and the right. One of these uh, was made in Visualize. One of these is a real photo, um, and I just want you to sit back and try and think about which one is which. Hopefully, I can surprise you here. Um, and left or right, the right one was made in Visualize, right? So very, very close to the uh, to the true to life photography. So that, that's the kind of quality that you can expect to get out of uh, SolidWorks Visualize and Visualize Professional. Okay. So uh, first, before we get started, where do we find it, right? If you've got uh, if you're on subscriptions and you've got SolidWorks uh, Professional or Premium. Uh, you are entitled to uh, one seat of, or well, one seat per license um, of SolidWorks Visualize Standard. Uh, so, if you just uh, go to the the download section in the customer portal, uh, you you can log in right over there, uh, and you just scroll to the bottom of the page, and you can find the SolidWorks Visualize download. Um, download the EXE, install it, put in your SolidWorks license number, uh, and get going. Uh, and it's, it's, it's as easy as that. You can start using Visualize. Right yeah, now. The, thing, the thing that's been tripping up a few clients is that you just use the same SolidWorks license number that you do yeah. uh, for your SolidWorks. So that's been tripping a few people. Um, and also for network, you do have to let us know, right, so that we can activate it? Yes. With, network. Yeah, so with network right? licenses, you'll have to contact us, and we'll give you uh, an, uh, a specific key with a certain number of activations, however many that you're, uh, you're entitled to. Uh, and then that's what you would put into Visualize to get it going. Perfect. So get going. What's holding you up? The nice thing about it is the licensing uh, can run separate from SolidWorks. So you can actually have somebody from sales or marketing using the application while you're in SolidWorks designing. Oh, absolutely. Right. Okay. So uh, today, just kind of on the agenda for, for the webinar, um, we're going to start with uh, importing our CAD data uh, and quickly applying some appearances, um, you know, really making it look good. Um, we'll get to setting the scene, so applying some scenes, applying some lighting. Um, and then we'll we'll end up off with the uh, the pro feature of the day or Scott's pro tip. I like to call it Scotty's pro tip of the day, but uh, we have lots of Scots here at Javelin. You got to differentiate. That's true. There's quite, <laughs> there's quite a few. Um, but yeah, so we're uh, you know the primary focus is on getting you guys started, learning, and getting going with your existing visualized license. But there's lots of advantages of pro, and per webinar we're going to uh, make sure we focus on one. So okay, let's get going. Perfect. So. Uh, we're going to start off with a bit of a scenario here. So we've got an espresso machine. Um, it's a very nice SolidWorks espresso machine. And we've got it inside of SolidWorks. Um, and this is what we've got, right? We've got, we've got a shaded with edges model. And we want to be able to make it a, just a little bit more emotional, be able to connect with our end users a little bit more. Um, I don't know about you, but right now, the way that it is, it doesn't really scream, I want an espresso out of this right now. So what we want to do is we want to take it and we want to make it look more like this, right? We want to give it some, you know, maybe some nice camera angles, maybe some nice depths of field to really make the imagery pop and give us some marketing material. Okay, so let's get started. Why don't we do a quick poll question as you're setting up there? Sure. So while you're switching over, I'm going to ask, how are you creating uh, your marketing and sales imagery today? So curious whether you're one of the non-technology believers and believe it's witchcraft um, or using an existing PhotoView 360, which is an excellent tool, um, but you know not quite what SolidWorks Visualize brings to the table, as you'll see today. Um, if you're using something else, it would be great to know, and uh, or if you outsource it, it would be good to know as well. So 
a lot of our uh, users, the vast majority online, are, are saying PhotoView 360, so I, uh, I'm not uh, surprised to hear that. Um, so you should be delighted to know that this is a great addition. Okay, ready to get going? Yeah, we're ready to go. All right, let's close that up. And there we go. All right. So, right, here's our espresso maker that we brought in from SolidWorks. Okay. Is that already 3D? That already looks, oh my goodness. It looks pretty good. That looks like uh, an image already. And the nice thing uh, about SolidWorks as well is, or uh, with SolidWorks Visualize rather, uh, is that it brings in all of the appearances that we already applied in SolidWorks. So it, it knows uh, what appearances are mapped to which parts. Uh, and it also brings in the full assembly structure as well. Whoops. Got a little bit too clicky there. Okay, so we still have a full uh, feature tree, just like we would inside of SolidWorks, uh, with all of our parts in them. So if somebody's opening this up the first time, they just literally go file open SolidWorks assembly? Yes. Yep, that's just it. Like you that. just dra drag the assembly right in, or you can go file open, uh, and you can you can bring it right into uh, right into Visualize. Okay, uh, and we've got some you know pretty handy options as well. If we wanted to group any parts together, we can do that. Right, we can create groups. So if we wanted to start moving stuff around, we can do it instead of doing it one by one. We can do it in a group. Uh, we can also uh, merge parts together. So if we know that we're going to be applying uh, appearances to the same part and we want them to change together, we can merge them together. Right? So now when we apply to appearance to one, it's going to automatically apply to the other as well. Right? So we've got some, some kind of cool upfront features that we can add right into our feature tree. Uh, and then we can get going and start painting this thing. Right? So here on the sides of our model, maybe we don't want to go with an orange, maybe we want to go with something else. We can quickly adjust the colors. What we're working with, maybe we wanted to go with a nice green. Right? Maybe a nice blue. Okay, so very, very easy to manipulate our materials. Okay. We can also manipulate the way that the light hits our material as well. Maybe this is going to be in a dark room, and we want to really add some nice reflectivity to these panels. So we can take our roughness rate down, and you can see how it just changes in real time. You get that instant feedback. Right? Maybe it's maybe it's going to be in a dark room. Maybe we want to make it a little bit more dull so that it's not... Uh, or sorry, maybe it's going to be in a light room. We want to make it a little bit more dull so that the reflection is not overpowering. Right? We can bring that roughness right up. Uh, give it more of a satin finish. Right? So, you know, these again, this I mean, this is the basics, right? This is bringing it in. Very easy to paint. Um, you know, if we wanted to uh, to focus in on the top of our model. And something important to note as well, uh, working in Visualize, is that the controls are a little bit different than SolidWorks. So if you're used to SolidWorks and how uh, your model rotates in SolidWorks, um, it's a little bit different inside of Visualize. So with Visualize, I just want to hold the Alt key for most things that I do. So Alt uh, and left mouse button, it's going gonna, it's gonna to let you tumble the model, just like you would normally, uh, you'd normally do by pressing down the mouse key inside, inside of SolidWorks. Right? If I use the right uh, mouse button, it's going to zoom in and out. Again, holding that Alt key. Right? If I click down with my mouse button, my scroll button, it's going to let me pan my model. And then if I use my roller, mount, uh, roller key, it's going to let me change my perspective. Okay, so a little bit different than what you would normally be used to in SolidWorks. Uh, takes about 10 minutes to get used to, and then you'll be flying on this thing. And there is a list of shortcuts, right? When you get started, absolutely, you can, there uh, is absolutely you can find that if, stuff pretty quickly. If I just hit the F12 key on my keyboard, it's going to pop up all of my hotkeys. I can I can see quick ways to do everything and anything under the sun and visualize. And when I want it to go away, I can just hit F12 again and I can hide it. So you don't actually need to remember any other hotkey but F12. It's kind of ironic to use a hotkey to find all hotkeys. Yeah, but, fair enough. But, That's uh, true. <laughs> I did on the on the rotating side though. I did hear that SolidWorks was planning in a future release to bring some of the SolidWorks navigation to to Visualize. Um, right? I would think that they're definitely working on it. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there there's a lot of great innovation happening with this product right now. Uh, it being being such a new product, um, and absolutely, I am I'm, I'm sure that they're working on on bringing those features in for sure. Yeah. Either way, easy to to navigate and find your way around. Absolutely. Right. So, you know, even if we wanted to apply uh, a new appearance, right, we've got our library tab over on the right-hand side, and this holds all of our appearances, 
Uh, it holds all of our environments, all of our scenes, everything like that. Um, and the, the kind of really cool thing about this um, that was uh, huge for me, um, opposed to some other, uh, like PhotoView 360, for instance, is there's a cloud library that you can use. Um, so you can use all of the appearances off your local, or you can connect to the cloud library uh, and pull appearances directly from there if you don't have them on your system. Uh, so it's very cool. And uh, if we just, let's, let's go to plastics. Uh, so you can see everything with a check mark I have locally, anything without it is actually uh, being pulled from MySolidWorks.com, and I can download it in one click. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's very cool, very intuitive, very, you know, you have all of these different materials at your fingertips. Um, if I want to apply a material, I can just drag and drop it on the surface that I want to apply it on, and it applies the material for me. Right? And if I want to modify that, I can even go into my texture, and I can modify my texture very easily. In this case, uh, maybe I want to make this a little bit more of a rough texture. Right? I can take, I can adjust my tiling, and I can see it all updating in real time. Right? I can, uh, I can modify my bump strength to really give it some nice ridges. Um, you know, if I wanted it to be a little bit more textured, right? Or I could say, no, I don't want to be, have that textured at all. At all. Um, and I could just go with, you know, a nice semi-gloss, right? So very easy to uh, paint our model, to set up our model the way that we want it, and we get that, that instant visual feedback. Right. Is it fair to say that uh, you found more flexibility with the materials compared to just the native SolidWorks and PhotoView 360? Oh, oh absolutely. Um, being able to quickly create your own materials is huge. Um, PhotoView 360, the big, the, the big thing with Visualize over PhotoView um, is that you get that instant feedback. With PhotoView, whenever you wanted to check your lighting, whenever you wanted to check how material was going to, wor going to work, you'd have to open that preview window. It was very separate. This is all integrated right into your viewing window. Um, and it's all happening in real time. Right? Uh, another great feature, and this is a pro feature, uh, is that you can do different configurations. So, you know, say, again, we've, you know, we've got this Espresso Maker inside of Visualize. Uh, and management has told us, listen, we don't know exactly what color we want right now. We've got a few ideas. Maybe we, we have three different ideas we want to tr try and float around. Uh, you know, you can easily have uh, different configurations, and you can easily uh, switch between them, right? So if we create a configuration, we can call this our original configuration, which we can call orange, right? We can create a new one, and let's call this, I don't know, let's call this blue. We'll make it blue, okay? And now if I want to change this, I can say, all right, I want to make these side panels blue. Well, let's take my original um, appearance. We'll just do a quick Control-C, Control-V to copy and paste it. And just like that, I've got another material to work with. And I can say, all right, well, I started with orange, and now I want it to be more of a blue. So maybe, an, oh, aquamarine, I like that. All right, drag and drop, apply it, all right, and just make sure that we set it in that configuration. Right? And then maybe, okay, well, we might want to give this a stealthy look as well. Maybe we want to make this, um, you know, a nice charcoal. Oops. Right? So we can call this charcoal. Again, do a quick Control-C, Control-V, and maybe bring this down to a nice gray. Yeah, something stealthy looking. Apply it. Okay, that looks, that looks pretty stealthy, I think, anyways. Right? And now we can just easily cycle through our different configurations. So we can see what our orange configuration looks like. We can see what our blue configuration looks like. Uh, and, you know, we can see what our charcoal configuration looks like. Right? So very easy to be able to express multiple design paths or de design ideas um, and, and be able to really, you know, demonstrate that to management, you know, right from within the, the application. Uh, and the great thing as well with Pro uh, is when I go to actually render these out, right? So I've got a lot of different options when I go to go to actually output these and get these out of uh, out of Visualize. Um, and a big thing with Professional is that I can actually render out all configurations at once. So instead of rendering out one, waiting for it to finish rendering, going back in, changing the configuration, waiting for it to render, I can render them all at once. And with Professional, I can send everything out to our render queue. This is huge. I can stack all of my rendered, all of my projects throughout the entire day, so I'm not losing any kind of productivity. 
and I can just hit go when I'm ready to go home. Let it render overnight, come back, or you know, if I've got any downtime, I can let it render during downtime. Your computer can basically be your assistant at night. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's kind of that'd be nice. Absolutely. Um, so we are like for the majority of this, we are touching on the standard functionality, but uh, you know, this is a great example where um, you know there's huge productivity gains with Pro. Uh, one of the key areas um, that we'll uh, we'll touch on later on, just so you guys are aware of what are the main reasons why customers are considering uh, considering Pro as an option. No, oh, absolutely. I am seeing that some people are in, are asking questions as well through the webinar, so feel free to just keep asking questions and type them in there. We'll uh, I'm going to answer a couple as we go, otherwise we'll answer them at the end. Perfect. Um, awesome. What's next on the topic list? Uh, next thing, you know, we've got this looking pretty good. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to set our scene um, and we're going to set our environment. Okay. So up until now, we've been working in our models and our appearance tabs. Um, we're going to take one more skip over into our scenes. Okay. So uh, you can see we've got some scenes and these actually come out of SolidWorks, right? So the scene that you're modeling in, um, that translates over into visualize. But it might not necessarily be the scene that we want uh, to, you know, to light our model. So you can see I've got this default Chrome Studio. So this is the default scene that Visualize uses. And if I just double click it, you can see it's going to change the way that my model looks. Um, these are called HDR um, scenes. And essentially what they are is uh, the light parts of the scenes or the whiter parts of the scenes are lighting our model uh, in, in real time. So to kind of give you that true to life uh, render. So, you know, if you, if you have an HDR, and, and you know what, let's go, let's apply one. Let's go to our library. Uh, let's go to our environments. You know, and let's say we drag in, I don't know, German dirt road. Why not, right? Say Great we want, spot for an espresso machine. Absolutely, right? So uh, we can drag it in, and you're going to see how the reflections and how the, the lighting on the model changes. Uh, right? So if I had, uh, if I wanted to show that environment, and I wanted to, really light that realistically, um, I could do that. For now, uh, let's go back to, let's go with the Chrome Studio. I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty partial to the Chrome Studio. Uh, I think it looks pretty nice. Uh, so even from within here, I've got a ton of different options uh, that I can really tweak the way that, uh, that my model looks, right? So I can adjust the brightness of my scene. Okay, if I want to brighten it up a little bit, maybe it's a little bit darker than I'd like. I can also darken it up. Um, I can change the size of my scene. I can rotate it. Um, you know, I can control how reflections uh, are, are going to be looking. Uh, and actually, a, a nice quick key, uh, this is one that I use a lot, is if I hold down Control and Alt, and I just click and drag my mouse, I can rotate the environment, and I can see in real time how that lighting is affecting my model. So I can, I can really tweak it to say that's where I want it to be. Yeah, especially those highly reflective, like, chrome handle there. You can see exactly where those lights are. Just uh, really tweak it where you want. Absolutely. And once we've set the scene and we've set the lighting the way that we want it with our model, we can take one more jump over into our camera tab. Right? So by default, um, we have a default camera. This is the camera that yeah, opens with every visualized um, uh, project. And we can easily, just like we do with appearances, we can copy and paste this if we want to have another camera uh, so that we can set our angle, right? And we can call this camera, let's call this, uh, let's call this post. And you'll see why in a second. So, you know, I can change the angle on this camera if I want to, if I really wanted to show this from a different angle, maybe I wanted to add a little bit of perspective to it, right? And you can see that it doesn't change the first camera. So I can set up multiple cameras at different angles uh, you know, without impacting any of my other scenes that I've already set up. Uh, and again, just like with the scenes, you know, we've got a lot of different options with where a camera is. Um, you know, a lot of these are manipulatable with those, those hotkeys, right, using those alts to movement, because we're not actually moving the model when we rotate. Uh, we're, we're moving the camera. We're not actually moving any of the model, because th this is your viewport. Essentially, this is the camera lens that you're looking through in your model. Okay, so we have some great post-processing options to really give our model some, some pop. Uh, and we can add in, you know, a nice vignette, or a vignette, sorry. Right, we can slight, we can darken or we can lighten our, our environment. Uh, we can change the exposure, and right, if we wanted to up the exposure just a little bit. Uh, you know, we can even add a color filter. So maybe, you know, we really wanted to see this in sepia, right? We can add a little bit of a color filter to it. 
uh, just to give you a, you know a few more robust options to really make uh, your image pop, right? And these are all um, fully animatable. So when we get into the animation side of things, um, post processing, um, depth of field, which we're going to get into in just a second, these are all um, animatable. If you really want to draw attention to a certain part of an animation or of a model, uh, this is a great way to do it. So you know we've got one view which we're pretty happy with. Um, so I just do copy and paste. And maybe we want to really focus on this handle. Maybe this was a new addition to this particular model uh, to help us eject uh, our espresso pods, right? So you know I can change my model up a little bit. Maybe I'll kind of a perfectionist, but right? that looks pretty good to me, right? And maybe we just really want to highlight this. So we can achieve this with the depth of field. So if I turn on my depth of field and I just hit my little eyeball over here, it's just going to tell me, listen, what do you want to focus on? And I want to tell it I want to focus in on this handle. Right? So you can see right away, it's that easy. It's one click. Right? Now you can see the handle is in focus. Everything around it is slightly out of focus. I can change how extreme that focus is using the f-stop. And this is just basic photography principles, right? So if I bring down my f-stop, everything's going to get a whole lot more blurry. And if I bring it up, it's going to get a little bit less blurry. The coffee's looking a little bit dreamy. It is looking a little bit dreamy. Yeah, I try to, I try to keep the f-stop um, decently high. Uh, but you can see, I mean, it definitely... Can dream of a coffee. Yeah, it definitely draws your eye to the handle, right? And you know what? We may want another camera that does the opposite. Right? Maybe we take our depth of field and we say, yeah, focus on the coffee cup because that's, that's where the magic's happening, right? And again, we can, uh, we, we can change that focus as well, right? So very easy. One, one touch, very easy to do. Um, and we've got all of our cameras now. Uh, and another, another great feature, again, with the Pro Suite, if we go to Render, right, we've got all configurations. We also have all cameras. So you can set up your model at all these different angles. Um, highlight what you need to highlight, render them all out at once. You don't have to render them one camera at a time. Can you do all configurations all with all cameras? That is an excellent question. That would be awesome. I'm I just gonna, thought of it now. I don't you know, know that we should look that up. Uh, I think you would probably have to put that, that would be a great use for the queue because then you could do all cameras and then all configurations. Right. Um, or go per configuration and then queue up all cameras. Yes. And, and yeah. Then, yeah, that's probably that what sense. I would do, but I'm going to do it now, because you mentioned it. Uh, Follow-up. We'll save that for the next webinar. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, you know, we have, we've got a few cameras, and, you know, now we've really, you know, we've really got some renders, um, you know, and they can, they can really, really pop. Uh, so, we've, uh, you know, we've, we've brought our model in to visualize, we've, painted it up, you know, we've, uh, we've gone over some of the hotkeys with it. Um, we've set up our scene, we've lit our model up a little, it's, it's looking really good. Um, and now, it's time for, for Scott's pro tip. So what is Scotty's pro tip of the day? Okay. Let's Which see. one shall we focus on? Let's see what we got here. So, we've got a few different uh, pro features that we like to focus on. Um, you know, creating even better looking images, right? Uh, using some advanced lighting, uh, again, those post-processing options, which actually you already saw, so I already kind of gave you a little bit of, a, uh, of, uh, of an insight into that. Um, producing animations, right? Being able to, again, using that one-click turntables, um, using the animation ribbon for some visual feedback. Um, easily producing that interactive web content with VRs and panoramics. Uh, and, you know, that higher productivity, using that queue, uh, using model sets inside of, your, inside of your models so that you can have multiple models in the same environment. Um, it's all great stuff. Today, we're talking about animations because everybody loves animations. Uh, you know, it's it's a huge highlight in the pro in, in the pro package. Um, in fact, you can see one just over on the right here. This animation was made inside of uh, inside of Visualize, uh, and then it was rendered out, um, and it was uh, just done a little bit of post in um, in Premiere, and uh, and it was good to go. You know, this would be great for a Kickstarter program. I would buy that. That actually looks kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, SolidWorks Professional can now kickstart uh, a whole Kickstarter with like you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Based yeah. On and, you don't, and you don't have to make anything. You just have to yeah. design it in, 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 in a virtual environment. Convince them it's real. Yeah. There's been issues with that though, right? <laughs> yeah. 
because then you have to deliver once you sell all of them. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's take our default camera because I'm okay with uh, with where that's at. And let's copy and paste it, and let's call this animation. Okay. So what we want to do is um, we're going to just do a really simple animation on this, just to really highlight. Um, and you know, and kind of create that emotional connection with our with our model, right? So the end user can you know just get a little bit more of a feeling out of it instead of having it as a still picture. So the first thing that we want to do is turn on our timeline. Okay. Um, now that's a that again that's another hotkey. We can also always turn it on from uh, our tools. Show timeline, right? and you can see right beside it. That's the hotkey for it. Control L. Okay. So uh, the way that our timeline breaks down. Right, is we've got sections we can dictate how long our animation is going to be. We can dictate uh, the speed of the playback. We've got a few a few other options, things like frames per second and that sort of thing. In this particular case, we're just going to do a really short um, three second animation. So I'm actually just going to grab uh, the red bar here and I'm just going to drag it out to three seconds. Okay, so that's just, I just kind of dictated to visualize this is how long I want it to be. And what we're going to do is we want to have like a little bit of a close-up on the front here, and I want to move these pods out of the way. Essentially, I want this to be part of the animation. Okay, just have them move off screen. Uh, so I'm going to go to Part Selection, and I'm just going to highlight these pods here. Okay. And I'm going to right-click on them, and I'm just going to say Add Keyframe. So you can see there's a, there's a hotkey for that as well. But what adding a keyframe does is essentially now Visualize knows I want to animate these. Okay, so I want them to start in this position, which they are, right? Because we're at zero zero, and if I just move my slider out to three seconds, I can now grab these, and let's just move them off screen. There they go. Bye bye. And you're going to notice that oh, they've added some lines here. Right? So we can actually scrub through the animation now, and we can already see that Visualize is interpolating the, the, uh, the animation between the two keyframes. So I'm, I'm okay with that. that. That's actually that's looking pretty good so far. And if you want, you don't need to have the rendering happening all the time, right? No, absolutely. And in fact, there's, uh, there's a few different modes that you can actually set your, uh, your viewport in. So right now I'm in fast mode. This is a nice... Uh, combination between um, what's called accurate mode, which is full ray tracing, uh, to preview mode. So uh, accurate mode, this is more of what you would get, um, you know, it's, it, it, it only goes up to about uh, 100 passes, okay? And what passes are is the more passes, essentially, the more passes, the better your image is going to look, okay? Uh, so I can definitely hit that into accurate mode, right? This is, this is the mode that you would render on. It's going to give us a little bit better uh, lighting, and it's going to give us a higher pass count. Okay, But for animation, generally I keep things in the preview mode. So you're going to see previews, it's kind of a crude, it's, it's, it's kind of a, uh, you know, it's a lower quality look, but when I actually go to animate, everything's a lot smoother, because it doesn't have to do any of the graphical processing. So if I just want to set up my animation, see how it's going to look, I'm okay with the way it looks, and then you'd render the animation out in accurate mode so that it looks really high quality. Right? So I've got some, some pods moving, and now I just want to move in and, and really take a look um, at my model here. Well, I've, I've uh, manipulated some of our parts. I've animated some of our parts, um, and now I want to animate my camera, and I hope I can. Let's take a look. Oh, I can add a keyframe. So let's try it out. Add keyframe. We'll scrub out to our, uh, our three seconds, and then we'll just modify where our camera's looking here. Let's say we want to show, maybe modify the perspective a little bit, right? I just realized we're right at the half hour mark. I just wanted to make you aware, because um, we should probably wrap it up in the next five Minutes. So okay. Don't go too far, far over time. Yet. All right. I'm sorry. I get really excited about these things, and I lose <laughs> track of time. Uh, so definitely, I'll, yeah, I'll wrap it up. So, and really, this is kind of the last part of it, anyway. So you can see now, if I scrub through, that the camera is animating as well. So you know, in I don't know, what did this take? A minute and a half. 
two minutes. Yeah, could have done it quicker. I probably could have done it quicker if I wasn't talking. Absolutely. Uh, and I just hit OK. You know, and we've got a, you know, a, a fairly uh, uh, robust animation. You know, uh, it's only three seconds, but it definitely gets the point across. And we could render that out um, and make that look very, very good. So since we're since we're running over time, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there. Uh, do we have any finished result to look at um, of an animation similar to that? Or? Uh, we definitely do. Uh, that's, that's okay. I mean, this one's good enough. Just kind of giving you a sense of yeah. I mean, this you can do. Yeah, I mean, this is essentially what you're what, what you're gonna get. Um, I also have um, as a bonus feature um, something at the end of the presentation that, that that you can take a look at as well. For sure. Hey, before we move on to this, I thought we'd uh, uh, just kind of do a quick poll on the Visualize Pro capabilities. Um, you know, highly encourage everybody to start with start with standard. You got to get going with it. Um, take advantage of the licensing that you have if you have SolidWorks uh, Professional or Premium. Um, but yeah, definitely interested to hear. You know, what are the most compelling benefits of Visualize Pro? And uh, you know, we showed you the animation today. Very quick to make. Uh, camera and uh, motion of parts animation, and there's a few others here as well. So it'd be Absolutely. great if you could uh, fill that in. It'd be amazing. So I'll uh, wrap up that poll. Perfect. Um, and guys, definitely, um, you know, check check out our website if you want to know more about Visualize. Um, we've got uh, a few uh, training courses coming up. Um, actually, I think we're the only bar in. Yeah, do we have a training schedule or not? We don't have. Um, the training schedule right now is um, it, it's it's uh, it's a little bit fluid. Um, <laughs> so we just change it. I think so early July. Why don't we just leave it at that? I believe right? it's early July. Yeah. So yeah. we have um, we have a visualized training course uh, booked for early July, um, developed by us by Javelin. So we're the only uh, reseller uh, globally that's offering this course, and we're delivering it um, as a Jolt course. So Javelin it's, online. Yeah, it's online uh, and it's in person. So we're right. and it's on site. Uh, we're, Whatever you'd like, absolutely. Um, so yeah, no, we're 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 very excited about it. Um, it's 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 got a lot of uh, a lot of good feedback so far, and um, looking Perfect. forward to it. Yeah, and hopefully you saw from today that it is absolutely an easy application to learn. But um, I would say that it can be a little bit challenging to master it with the amount of like productivity areas that really it does help from getting somebody to guide you through them. No, absolutely. I mean, and, and I mean that's that's our job is to dive in and, and, and really get down to the nitty gritty. Uh, not a lot of people don't have time during their day to actually dive in and, and, and look at every little feature. So uh, definitely. Sounds good. Do you have an uh, animation to finish Bon off on? Bonus content time. Um, this is, uh, I don't know if you've seen Captain America. It's a pretty popular movie. I think Marvel <laughs> made it. Uh, but this is uh, the Schmidt Hydra Coupe. And um, this was completely done in Visualize. So except it, for the text, though, right? Except uh, for the text. So the, the, yeah, the yeah. text is all is all post processing. Uh, but the model, all the lighting, all the animation was all done uh, in Visualize. So it's 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 pretty uh, it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, you know, I've seen it about twenty times now, and it's man, it still looks good. Yeah. Now there was text. As a decal, I think in there too, which can be done in this. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So just to clarify, we're just talking about like the labels and titles that go over it. But I, like as you can see, it's just amazing um, the quality of content that you can get um, using the SolidWorks tool. So, Absolutely. And SolidWorks uh, Pro is a very affordable uh, upgrade as well. It's not uh, it's not the cost of uh, cost of SolidWorks on the CAD side. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. So it's, it's, uh, uh, we'll leave it at that, and we will end off on uh, one other poll. I'm curious whether uh, you'd be interested in uh, the visualized course, um, or how best to to help you get uh, get going. So hopefully you found this webinar useful today. Um, I thought it was great to see kind of the whole workflow from uh, from start to end. I, there's a couple pieces there that were. Uh, or new to me as well, so thanks for taking the lead, uh, Scott. Hey, no problem. Um, and if you have, uh, we'll stick around for questions. If there's uh, more stuff that uh, that you want to learn about, um, we're happy to stick around for a few minutes and answer questions. Um, if not, uh, thanks so much for attending, and uh, we look forward to working with you on your rendering needs. Absolutely, thank you very much. Perfect. So we're just going to uh, sit tight and uh, just look at the question queue to see if there's anything in there. Um, have a great day.